morning, everybody. Happy Saturday. It is day 13, 13 days of daily language diaries. Oh, I'm having so much fun, but there's, there's no coffee today. <laughs> really? No, come on. There we go. You know me, there's no daily language diary without coffee. Oh, Saturday, I love you. All right, let's jump into today's daily question because this is another really good one. John Johnson writes in, topic idea, your thoughts on how to make learning, how to understand spoken or signed language faster. This has been one of my weakest areas for all languages I've studied. Thanks. Oh my God, this is such a good question. Now, John, I feel your pain, <laughs> seriously. And I'm pretty sure that everybody watching this video, whether you have learned many languages successfully, whether you've learned one, or whether you're learning your first foreign language now, we've all been through this really puzzling period of time where it's just kind of baffling, where we're learning and we're working really hard and we're learning more words and we're constantly improving our language knowledge, but it's still just really difficult to understand spoken language. And I think this stems from a natural idea that we all have when we first start out. And the idea is that the only thing that's stopping us from understanding something is just the words or the grammar structures. It's just the knowledge. If we had a piece of content of spoken language, and if we understood every single word, all the grammar, we would understand it fine. And the problem is that is not actually how it works. You see, there are so many other factors involved in being able to comfortably comprehend spoken language, especially from native speakers, and especially if it's more than one native speaker talking to each other. Because there's a really interesting phenomenon where even once you get comfortable speaking to a native speaker one-on-one, -on -one, very often, I would say almost every time, if they then start speaking to one of their friends and they're both going back and forth, you'll find it is significantly harder to understand. I think that's a great topic for another video, but John, today I want to really discuss how we can go about trying to approach making it easier to understand spoken language. I'm gonna give you another method. And by the way, yesterday's video, which was day 12, all about how to build fluency in a foreign language, that method also works great. So I would recommend watching that after this video if you haven't already seen it. So as I mentioned, even if you understand all the words in a sort of piece of spoken language content, there are a number of other factors that go into you actually being able to comprehend that comfortably. So for example, people tend to use a lot of filler words or a lot of ums and ahs, people will often sort of start a sentence and then kind of go back and they will sometimes cut a sentence off halfway, but they will restart what they're saying, but not at the very beginning. Native speakers of different languages will do this differently, but in many cases, words will tend to blend together, some words more than others. There's a certain rhythm and cadence of a language that if you're not familiar with, can make it difficult to understand. So there are all these finer details and nuances of spoken language that we have to get comfortable with if we're gonna comfortably comprehend what people are saying. So the basic principle of today's method is that you wanna get a piece of content that's fairly digestible. So this is gonna depend on what your level is. I would say you need to be an intermediate learner in order to do this. If you're still a beginner, I think that you probably wanna focus more on getting comfortable with the language and following steps that I've discussed in other videos. So you're gonna take a fairly short piece of content. In my case, I'm gonna use the example of when I was learning French and I did this with one of my favorite all-time podcasts Chemin d'écrivain. They're about 10 minutes long. And I decided, cool, I have a 10 minute piece of content. It's not too large. And the idea is that we want to get to a point where we actually do understand almost all of the words in this piece of content. Now, it's quite a lot of work to do this, but what it does is it actually allows you for the first time to actually focus on those finer nuances and details that we just discussed. Because very often, if you listen to a brand new piece of content, there are gonna be so many words and little things that you don't understand that you're gonna be so focused on just those gaps and you're gonna be so focused on simply trying to hear the words that you're just not able to truly focus on those other things that are required to comfortably understand these things. But the process that we go through to get to that place where we actually kind of know all the words and phrases and grammar stuff 
any piece of content is also vital. So I'm gonna give you kind of a rough analogy to sort of think about this as we go through the steps. So I want you to imagine a car that has an engine and the engine works, but it's very inefficient. Something is not well calibrated and it's, it's not working terribly well. Well, that's like your ears. Imagine that your ears are that kind of poorly calibrated underperforming engine and so when you hear this spoken language and you just can't, sometimes you can't even really hear all the words because it's too quick and even if you listen to it three or four times and it's almost like your ears are just not calibrated yet to properly hear all the sounds so you hear a piece of content let's say it's my 10 minute episode of this podcast front to back and you know, let's say I understood 30 or 35 or 40%, who knows? So what I'm gonna try and do with this particular method is I'm gonna try to transcribe it. Now this is extremely helpful because it forces you to be very, very attentive to what's being said. It's gonna force you to just break it down into chunks, maybe 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, and really try your best to write down everything that's being said. Now, this is also gonna force you to kind of do multiple iterations and multiple repetitions. So the first time through, unquestionably you're going to understand a lot less the second and third time each time you're going to be able to focus a little bit more on the things that you didn't previously catch okay so we've gone through this first step of sort of listening to it and then doing our very best to transcribe what we heard and of course we're going to have gaps so i recommend that you actually really highlight the gaps where you're like I couldn't get this part. Now for the next part, you're gonna need either a transcript or a native speaker or somebody who can help you actually fill in those gaps. Now what this does is it actually, it's, it's instrumental. It's very much like an engineer taking that engine and fine tuning it, recalibrating it. Because you have a piece of content that the first time your ears just couldn't pick up. They weren't able to catch what was said, but then, you sort, of, you sort of fine tune it and you say, oh, so these, th this combination of sounds and this filler word, they were actually expressing this. And this process is extremely helpful because it's this calibration process. I love to think of this as fine tuning an engine. So every time I have a sentence that I hear and I'm like, ah, I couldn't catch it. What did they say? When I then get clarity and see, oh, they said this. Well, then I can map that meaning to the sounds that were spoken and I can start to patch things. I can start to bridge the gap. I can start to understand like, oh, interesting. So when they kind of mumble and blend those words together, it kind of equates to this combination of sounds or this combination of words. And as you do this over again, you'll find patterns. And so in French, for example, the language does tend to kind of blend together. One word sort of bleeds into the next. It's very smooth sounding. Or in Japanese, there's this constant sort of eto, ano, ano, nanka, nanka, nanka sa. And so like all these different things can sort of obfuscate how words sound. But again, as you as you calibrate over and over again, you start to get very good and it helps you to really fine tune your ears to sort of like filter out the things that are stopping you from understanding. Then what I would do is I would actually make sure that I learn all those words. So you're gonna learn the words that, that were new to you and you essentially just, you have this small piece of content. It could be two minutes long. It could be three minutes, it could be 10 minutes. It depends on your level. The higher your level, the more you're gonna be able to tolerate. But so by this point, your comprehension skills are already going to have improved a lot because you've gone through this process of transcribing, identifying your gaps, filling in the gaps and recalibrating your ears, listening again. And then now you've gone through another step where you have all these new words and you have this piece of content where you, in theory, understand all the words and the grammar, like you understand every piece of this content. And so this is where the true magic happens because at this point, it's you and this content. And the only thing standing between the two of you are all those really fine nuances that we talked about at the beginning of this video. So if you listen to that content now, understanding all the words, and you still don't quite catch everything, well, this is great because now 
all you have to do is just repeat. You just have to listen to it over and over again. Maybe slow it down, maybe focus on certain parts. But the point is that you are now finally able to actually listen to something for the first time without being completely distracted by all the words you didn't know and everything else. I also think that confidence is a big thing. When you listen to a piece of content for the very first time or when you go and speak to a native speaker, there's a certain fear that we have because we don't know what they're going to say and we don't know if we're gonna know all the words. But now you're facing this content, you have the confidence because you know, okay, I know all this stuff. I know that it's in my head. And again, all you have to do is just focus on just fine tuning and calibrating your ears to be able to overcome all those other things. And I promise you, when you arrive at a place where you have any piece of content, whether it's two minutes long, three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, it is so such an amazing feeling to be able to just listen to it calmly and comfortably understand it. It's the best feeling in the world. And for many of us, we've never had that. For many of you learning a language, you've probably never had the experience of actually being able to just comfortably understand authentic content. And that also builds your confidence. And so if you watched yesterday's video about building fluency, you'll notice that that technique accomplishes almost the same thing. So you can go and use resources like Easy Languages that are gonna have bilingual subtitles, it's perfect. In that situation, what I would do is just block out the subtitles the first time as you're trying to transcribe it, but those are amazing resources and yesterday's technique works so well for this as well. Okay, John, I really hope that helps you. This is such an interesting topic and I think that it's, it baffles so many learners. So I would really love to hear everybody's feedback. Please like, let me know if this was helpful. Let me know if I could have explained anything more clearly because I really, do want to help people get clarity on this and I think that if people understand these principles it's a lot easier to just trust the process and to just go through these steps and I think oh my god it's gonna help you so much all right everybody happy Saturday have an amazing day I hope you learned something new in your language today and I'll see you back here tomorrow